Safety has no quitting time. The price of an accident is always high. Safety first. Be alert. Accidents hurt. Safety is everyone's responsibility. Have you ever heard any of these safety phrases? Well, I'm sure you have, and then you've quickly forgotten them, right? In this DVD, it's going to be my job to make sure you don't forget any of the basics about on-the-job safety. What you're about to see are nine different hazardous situations. Everything from a chemical spill, to a slippery floor, to a small fire. But in this DVD, you're going to be in the scene. That's right, you're going to be involved in finding the safest solution to each of these nine hazards. Now, how can we do this together? Well, this DVD is interactive. During each of the nine hazardous situations, there'll be a point where the worker needs to make a safe decision. At each of those points, the DVD will pause and you will be asked what you think the best solution is. You should have some handouts to guide you through this part. Now, there's no pressure here. These are obviously staged scenarios. However, if you find yourself in a hazardous situation, you'll need to think fast on your feet. And these scenarios might help you think about the kinds of hazards you might encounter at your job. Now, if you have your handouts ready, let's check out our first scenario. What would you do next? Take this time now to think about and discuss the best way to handle this potentially hazardous situation. After you've considered the best way to proceed, push the play button on your DVD player to see a couple of ways the worker could handle the situation. Hey, that's not such a good idea. He's ignoring that slippery puddle. Let's try that again. Whoa, this is not a good idea either. Hey Mary, we got a wet floor here. Will you please go get a mop and a wet floor sign? Sure, you bet. Thank you, Mary. You're welcome. Now we're talking. This is the best way to avoid dangerous falls. Mark off the area and get the spill cleaned up as soon as possible. Problem solved quickly and safely. Now, let's take a look at a lifting hazard. What would you do next? Take this time now to think about and discuss the best way to handle the situation. When you're ready, push the play button on your DVD player to continue. This was a bad choice. Not only did he drop the box, but he hurt his back too. This guy's got to learn the right way to lift a box. Got any better ideas? Hey Mike, can I borrow that hand truck? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Good job. Now you're thinking. Save your back a lot of pain and get those boxes safe and sound. Now, Let's check out a fall hazard. Did he make the right choice of ladder? What would you do next? Talk it over and see what you think. Then push the play button on your DVD player when you're ready.
now that's the way to do it, a worker who knows how to avoid safety hazards. What happens when you don't think it through for safety? Well, let's see. That's going to hurt. I think it's best to use the right tool for the right job, a sturdy ladder with good rubber feet. Now, sometimes there are hazards in places you might not expect. For example, a bathroom. How should she handle this? Take this time now to discuss her options. Now wait a minute, hold it right there. This is truly a life-threatening situation. If you ever see a syringe or anything that might be contaminated with blood or other biological materials like used tissues, never touch them unless you've been trained in bloodborne pathogens. You should always use appropriate tools and place any sharp objects like syringes in special sharps containers. And never compress trash in a trash can. There might be sharp objects and contaminants inside. Let's start the scene again and see the best way to handle this job. Nice job. Obviously, she's been trained in how to handle biological hazards. Be prepared and be safe. Make sure if your job exposes you to biological hazards that you get the training in how to protect yourself. Okay, let's move on. Would you know what to do if you saw an electrical wire sparking in your work area? Jack, come over here, quick! Oh my god, that looks really bad. Uh-oh, this doesn't look good. What would you do next? Discuss and consider your options. Yeah, no, don't throw water. That was really dangerous. We first need to cut the power. You're right. I wasn't thinking. I just got a little excited. You wait here. I'll go get the foreman. Now that was good thinking. If you ever see an electrical fire in the making, head straight to the breaker box. Dousing those sparks with liquid? Nah, I don't think so. I think the result might go something like this. <laughs> <coughs> Let's get out of here. <coughs> Let's go to our next scenario. Now, what's wrong with this picture? Take time now to discuss what's going on and consider the safest options. This looks like a recipe for disaster. The forklift driver can't see the pedestrian, and the pedestrian can't see the driver. Let's see what happens. Whoa, that was too close, way too close. Let's back this up a bit and start all over with a proper forklift load.
thanks. Super job, guys. Now that's the way it should be done. Proper forklift loading, eye contact, and clear communication are the best ways to avoid a potentially fatal collision. And remember, it requires proper training to drive a forklift. Don't drive it until you're thoroughly trained. Let's see how you all do with a fire situation. What would you do next? Do you know what your emergency procedures are? Take this time now to think about and discuss the best way to handle this truly dangerous situation. Okay, now hold it right there, pal. Now there's no question that any kind of fire can make you panic. But for this scenario, I have just two words for you. Fire extinguisher. You should always know where the nearest fire extinguisher is in your work area and know how to use it. Now let's try this again. Yes, fire extinguishers really do work. Now listen up everyone. Taking the safe steps to handle a fire or other emergency requires planning and training before the emergency happens. Make sure you've been trained on your job's emergency plan. Take the time to review the emergency contacts that are posted in your workplace. All right, let's move on to personal protective equipment. What would you do next? Think about it and discuss. Safety glasses and earplugs are so easy to use, it just makes sense to use them. Okay, let's take a look at our last scenario. What would you do next? Think it over. Whoa! This is truly a life-threatening situation. Never remove equipment guards on machinery with moving parts. If some operational problem occurs with the equipment you use, the best way to handle the situation is the following. This is the way to go. Make sure you understand the lockout tagout procedures for any equipment that you use. Well, you made it. I hope you all have arrived safely to the end of this presentation. And I hope you all have learned a few things about how to avoid unsafe hazards. 
Obviously, what you've just seen are not all of the possible hazards you may encounter on the job site. So, I want you to take just a moment and think about the hazards that may potentially occur where you work. Are there dangers closer than you think? Just stop for a moment and consider anything that could be a hazard in your daily work routine and then think of ways of avoiding or resolving them. Just by taking a moment, you may have saved yourself or a fellow employee a lot of pain and suffering, maybe even a life. If you have questions about any of these situations, please speak with your supervisor. And please do keep the handout materials for easy reference. Thank you.